Hi there, my name is Lee and I'm here to help make working with Excel easier for you. We have a range of helpful video tutorials that can make your Excel experience much more efficient. One of the most useful functions in Excel is the IF function. It is great for quickly evaluating a logical condition and determining if it is true or false. In this tutorial, you'll learn how to use the IF function to determine if a certain sales goal was met for a particular month. If you meet your goal, Excel will show a message saying goal achieved. If the condition is not met, a horizontal line will appear on the screen instead of the expected message. To make the most of the IF function, how can we best utilize it? To begin, click into the cell you chose to display the output. To begin, select cell D3. Then, type the equal sign followed by the word IF. To use the IF function in Excel, click on the IF option from the list of available functions. You will need to provide three pieces of information, an Excel logical test and two different values to be evaluated by the test. If the logical test produces a true result, one output will be displayed. If the logical test produces a false result, the other output will be displayed. We should begin by completing the logical test. We will use this formula to evaluate whether our sales this month met or exceeded our goal. We are attempting to determine if the sales for January in cell C3 are greater than the goal in cell G2. You can use this method to determine whether one value is greater than, less than, or equal to another. It is possible to place an additional IF function inside the logical test of this IF function. This enables you to make more intricate evaluations and comparisons. Once you have entered the logical test, please type a comma and we can continue. Now, Excel requires an answer that will be displayed if the condition we entered is correct. If this condition is not true, we will need to enter a value. Let's examine the first value that appears if the condition is found to be true. To get Excel to show the text goal achieved, you need to type it in quotation marks. If the first value is a number, it is not necessary to enclose it in quotation marks. Please remember to add a comma after typing your message. We now need to enter the value that will be displayed by Excel if the condition returns a result of false. If the sales for this month do not meet our goal, we would like Excel to show a dash instead of a message. To do this, we need to enter the dash in quotation marks. We have added all the required information, so let's finish up by adding closing breaks and press the Enter key. Congratulations on a job well done. In January, our goal was not achieved and the results were evaluated immediately. Be mindful and cautious. If you would like to copy this function across the entire column, a slight difficulty could arise. We have a great solution that will make this easy for you. If we want to use the function to evaluate the sales numbers for the remaining months, we can copy it by dragging the bottom left corner of the cell where the function is already located to the desired position. The function appears to be malfunctioning after it has been copied. In row four, the cell reference for the goal has shifted to G3, which is one cell lower than before. The cell in question does not contain any data, and the same issue occurs in row 5 when Excel references an incorrect cell for the goal. Let's resolve this issue. Examine the initial formula that was copied to the other rows. It is important to maintain a consistent reference to the goal throughout this function. Navigate to the cell in the formula that contains the goal value which is G2. You should now press the F4 key. For some computers, you might need to hold the function key while pressing F4. You can see two dollar signs, one preceding the letter and another preceding the number. These dollar signs fix the column and row respectively. By utilizing the dollar sign before the column and row references, it ensures that the cell reference remains consistent when the formula is copied. In every row, the formula will only use the cell G2 to calculate its result, regardless of which cell it is copied to. This technique can be applied to any Excel formula or function, so feel free to use it whenever it's necessary. Let's press the Enter key once more and attempt to extend the formula to the remaining cells. The function is performing as expected and is operating correctly. The rows in this table show how the sales numbers compare to the goal we have set. If you alter the value of the goal in cell G2, you don't need to modify the formula as the IF function is dynamic. 
the values in column D will be updated automatically. If you would like to explore more ways to use the IF functions in Excel, our video tutorial on how to calculate hours worked in Excel, Midnight Span, is a great place to start. In the tutorial, we use the logical test to determine whether the working time spans midnight. You can find a link to the tutorial in the description below, as well as video tutorials for other common Excel features. If you found this tutorial helpful, give the video a like. Is this your first time on me? I'll be more than happy to welcome you to our online community. Hit that subscribe button and join us, and learn how to use Excel like a boss. Thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next video.